Good morning and welcome everybody to Worldwide Workshop. We're asking 10 questions with people connected to ECE. And this is our guest. <laughs> What's Megan, your name? Megan Hamilton. <laughs> Megan. Uh, and I'm Matthew and with I'm me Justin. as always is Justin. So let's jump right in. Uh, so who are you? I am Megan Hamilton. I'm a mom, a wife. I have three boys. I am an ECE student. Um, in what? Is oh, I'm in the ECE Afrocentric program where Justin mm -hmm. is my instructor. <laughs> um, yeah, that's who I am. Um, could you just talk about your Nick? Oh, my crochet. Oh, and I also am a self-promotion. Yes, That's right. <laughs> I also do um, crochet as well as personalized items. More crochet now than personalized because a lot of people do that nowadays. Um, so every fall I crochet and I sell women's wear at craft shows, which is like my me time and keeps me sane. <laughs> and where could they follow you? Oh, you can follow me on Meg's underscore crochet on Instagram or Meg's crochet creations on Facebook. Perfect. We will put a link in the uh, comments, or not the comment section, in the something. In, in the, the bottom. Description. In the description, that's it. She knows what she's doing. We're no, new. So. All right. So um, my next question is, how are you connected to childcare? So I started taking care of children in my home after school when my oldest son was in grade primary or one. Mm -hmm. He's now in grade seven. Um, so I started just doing after school care. It was amazing. It was perfect. It worked out really well that it was like a free a play date that I got paid for. Mm -hmm. So I started to do that. And then that gradually over years was doing that. And then when my youngest, so I have three boys, my youngest started school. That's when I started working at my child's school doing um, lunch monitor, mm -hmm. as well as substitute EPA, as wow. well as pre-primary Excel. Wow. So that was all the yeah. year before COVID. Yeah. Um, so that's when I fell in love with pre-primary. So that's how I got to, into childcare. And also, actually, backtrack, when my youngest was a toddler, I started doing in-home care with two extra toddlers plus after-school care. Wow. So did you consider yourself a day home or not quite that not fancy? Not quite that fancy. Yeah. I'm In Halifax, we call that day home when uh, you have kids come over, uh, not just after school, but uh, in, in your home for, yeah. for care. But anyway. Yes. So I just, I didn't really consider it a day home. It was more of a people I knew. And then it ended up being like friends of friends. And then we right. all just, now we're all friends. You built a community. Yes. So good. All right. The next question is, what is your favorite thing to do in a child care center? My favorite thing to do in a child care center would be to read to the children. Okay. I love reading children's books and just like talking about the characters in the books and just finding things that interest them. And I really like to read Robert Munch books. <laughs> Me too. And I feel so guilty about it because Robert Munch is a cis straight white male and his voice has been heard many times, but his books are so good. They're so rhythmical. You know. the, it's the rhythm. It's it's also he does have I seen like one of his children was adopted yeah. and yeah. his daughter is is black I'm pretty sure or biracial, yeah. mm -hmm. so there's always different people of different ethnicities in his books even though he is a white male right yeah. so he still, he still shows it and it's always been there yeah yeah I love I love that that's that's kind of like my excuse for allowing it to be on the bookshelf <laughs> there there is some inclusivity to these books there's but, tons um, but it's so good for reading for. Uh, to reading to children, getting them to know the rhythm, but mm -hmm. also like inflections and voices. People who read without voices to children, stop. It's, it's not the same. You have to, no, you have to do it and you have to do it fast and you have to do it loud. And yeah. Have, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so good. Um, what is your preferred age group to work with? My preferred age group would be preschool. Okay. I like the three to four. They're, they're old enough that you're not necessarily having to do diapers. You yes. might have to be, you might have to be helping one or two. Right. But the, for the most part, there's, there's less diapers, there's less messes. They're more independent. They're now figuring themselves out. Mm -hmm. They know what they want. Mm -hmm. They know, they might not know how to say it sometimes, but they know how to say it more than right. they did in the younger ages. Yeah. And, and the other thing is they have a little bit more we than they do just I. Like yes. young toddlers are like, they know what they want, but it's what they want regardless of what other people, people want. Yes, they're yeah. more like apt to share with friends and they're, they're learning to take turns and they're learning that it's not just about what they want. Yeah. yeah. That, that age group's my favorite. Have you worked with older children yet? I 
I mean, you did like when you were doing preschoolers. Yeah, you did when you were doing your uh, after school, but that was stuff. more just like three extra friends of my children. Right. So it was like I would take them to. Um, we used to go to a lot of after school programs mm -hmm. um, in Sackville. There's a place called Memory Lane Family Place. Mm -hmm. So I would go. We were there at least four days a week. Wow. Like four days a week wow. we would be there. There was an after school program. They did a cooking club. So I would take the children to that. Right. So I wasn't really facilitating those programs, but I was taking them to those programs. Right. Right. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Knowing your community. It, yeah. Oh, we would go everywhere. So yes, yeah. this one. Well, maybe you'll change your mind next time because I love school age therapy. What were you going to ask? Me? Uh, what inspires you and where do you look for inspiration? Oh. Did you have any mentors or anything like that? Or? I, I think uh, you have now become my inspiration <laughs> after <laughs> coming and like hearing your guys' story and just like, I've been inspired off of my own as well as you. Like I came back to school 20, almost 18 years after I graduated school, right? right? I, I graduated high school in 2003 and then I was a mom Then I was a stay at home mom. Then I had a little in-home daycare. Then I had a job for a year, and mm -hmm. then COVID. Right. Yeah. And then this program, um, the Afrocentric program, came out and I signed up for it. And it's just this whole. I don't think I've been more inspired in my life since this. Like I know COVID's been awful, and it's been yeah. awful for me too. Right. But since that has happened, I've not. I've never felt more confident in myself and in my abilities to do hard things and to get, just to get to where I want to be. Yeah, that's the funny thing about COVID. Like, it it is traumatic. It is toxic stress. But at the same time, everybody had to take a l long, hard look at themselves, about their relationships, about where they are, and decide, am well, I happy? Because if, if I'm stuck at home, am I happy with me? Am I happy with the people around me? Do I believe in what I do as a person? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had a year and a half of that so far. And, uh, you know, we're coming out with... Uh, New it's ideas. time. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's really great that you're inspired by yourself. Like that's so, I think, I think inspirational to other people to be like, I can be my own inspiration. I've done things that are worth, I don't know. And saying it out loud. Yeah. And saying it out loud. I, I never said that until just now. Right. I started to say, I'm like, I'm kind of inspired by myself. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> also, I can't believe that you are the same age as us. <laughs> I am. Yeah. I said, because you're a student, I'm like, oh yeah, she's no, no, I have three kids. I'm old and I didn't have them like young, young. <laughs> yeah, so good. All right. What is your favorite meal or snack in child care? My favorite meal and snack would be just like straight up picky plates, like cheese, crackers, vegetables, like. <laughs> what did you call them? Picky plates. Piggy, like a, a pick, 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 picky pick, plate. Okay. Picky plates, not piggy plates. Piggy plates. <laughs> a picky okay. plate, like you get to pick like. Yep. Little like snacky plates. Yeah, we'll yeah. have them on the weekends at home sometimes. We'll be like, you guys just want like a snacky lunch? So it'll be like crackers, some hummus, oh, yeah. some veggies, some fruit. Right. Maybe like a little treat on the side, but. A so, charcuterie board, really. Yes. yes. It's yes. a child size version. That's <laughs> so good. Yeah. Pick and mix, they would call it in the UK. Oh, pick and mix. Pick and mix. Uh, oh, did you already flip this? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, big question. If money, people, and resources were not an issue, what would you change for childcare in every classroom? Mm. So big picture sort of thing. If none of that was an issue, I would like to see like every classroom to have like an amazing, um, like versatile, its own library that has like books with from like everything, like all of the amazing old books, all of the new books, new mm -hmm. authors, like just an amazing library also like to be able to have everything that you could possibly need for art supplies, like mm -hmm. childcare, oh my goodness, like everything, uh, <laughs> like anything. If we could have outfits for all the children, like if they could all have their own Muddy Buddies, like yeah. depending on the sizes, like you could have every child have the proper outerwear, the proper, mm -hmm. just cause you know, different families can't afford the Muddy Buddy version, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but it's, they're great, they're just expensive. Yeah. But if you could have all of that already read, ready, readily available yeah. for all of the children, um, what else? I like that because, you know, there are so many little things that stop children from thriving, you know, and it's it, as simple as I don't have ring boots, so I don't get to jump in puddles yeah. while everybody else does. Or if I do, I have soaking wet cold socks and right? then I get blisters on my feet and it's all because I just wanted to jump in the puddle and I didn't have my boots, right? Yeah. 
And it takes away from the educators saying, well, you can't do that because you didn't bring it, or I don't have extra things. Right. Yeah, it takes that stress away yeah. if, if yeah. that stuff If that was just available. all there. Yeah. yeah. So good. Yeah, so library, unlimited art supplies, and outerwear for all children. Yeah. That's great. The other thing about unlimited art supplies, I find that teachers are so... Um, Hoarding. Hoarding. That's nicer than stingy. <laughs> Hoarding. They want to make sure that it's fair and everybody gets the exact same amount of paper and the exact same amount of glue and the exact same amount of uh, markers and everything. It's like, okay, like, they're here for the kids. These kids mm -hmm. want to use the markers. Those kids over there want to use the blocks. Yeah. Let them just use the markers if they want to. Yeah. I brought in um, glitter foam sticker paper yeah. and I just cut it up into basic shapes so that the kids could, they were more accessible sort of thing, uh, easier to use. And uh, my co-teacher uh, saw it and she's like, oh no, they used the whole, you know, bin of sticker paper. I'm like, that's what well, it was that, here for. That's what I put yeah. it out for. I was hoping they would use it all. Yeah. I didn't really want it to sit on the shelf half used with the stickers like, now all Now I know they really liked it. Maybe I'll get some more. Yeah, and it was at right. the dollar store. It was a dollar, right? Come on. Anyway. Yeah, no. Resources could allow teachers to react. Yeah. Relax. Well, and then you're not taking it out of your pocket, right? Yeah. So, like, well, even though they love it and you want to keep buying it for them, but that's hard on you to do. Yeah. That's one of the benefits of the pre-primary program here in Halifax is that the teachers have a budget for uh, healthy snacks and materials. materials. Like, oh, and materials. Because yeah, consumable okay. materials. It was just snacks. Yeah. So um, I always have everything I want yeah. um, as far as that stuff goes. So Nice. Anyway, uh, finally, final finally question. Oh, go for it. What brought you to the childcare world? My children. My children brought me to the childcare world. Um, when I was a teenager, I was a horrible quitter. <laughs> <laughs> I was a horrible quitter. I dropped out of high school, then I went back. Yeah. And I went, then I said, I'm going to be um, an esthetician. So then I went to cosmetology school and I dropped out of that when I was 19. Mm -hmm. um, and then I decided, it's fine. I'll just work. And you know what? What I really want to be is a mom. Mm -hmm. I really want to be with as a mom. I've been with my husband since we were 19. Wow. Um, yeah. So Congratulations. We, thank you. So we were married when we were 24. And then at 25, I had my first son. And when he was two months old, I was like, I can't go back to work. I have to figure something <laughs> out. Like, I can't leave my baby. Where mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't take yeah. him and leave him somewhere. So ever since then, it's just been like, a, well, I was home with my youngest. Or sorry, I was home with my oldest until he went to school. And we would go to like family programs. Um, in Lower Sackville, there's like a lot of really good like drop-in programs. Mm -hmm. So we would go to those. And then my second one came along, they're 23 months apart. And again, it was just us and we were home. So I was doing childcare with my right. own children in my home, I was a stay-at-home yeah. mom. And then that's when I started taking children in after school. Cause I knew I just, I don't want to leave my kids when they're small. I wanted yep. to be there for them. and. But I, but we need money. Yep, so right. yep. <laughs> I'm like, well, we need some money. So I started taking kids in after school. And then when I had the little ones, yep. um, when I had my third son, I started doing the childcare with two extra toddlers throughout the week. And then I had two extra kids after school. I think it was two. I'm getting all my years. There were so many kids yeah. that I've <laughs> watched in my home over yeah. the years. But uh, that's that was it. And then when I came to... The school and I was working uh, substituting in pre-primary mm -hmm. and that's when I fell in love with the pre-primary program. I was like, this is what I want to do. Let's give a shout out to that educator. Who was it that was leading? Uh, that was Ohak. I always mispronounce Ohak Koperska, Koperska and Leanne Great job, Wyatt. <laughs> and Leanne yeah. Wyatt. She's still yeah. there. Okay. Great job, Leanne. <laughs> they're, they're my favorites. Yeah. Um, our, my, my plan with Leanne is she is now going to the Mount to get her level three. So oh, I'm like, fantastic. you do that, then you'll yes. be a lead. And then when I'm finished school, I'll come in and be your support. That's, that's, that's right. the plan. That's fantastic. Yep. <laughs> so hopefully yeah. that'll happen. That's amazing. Yeah, it's so great when you uh, get a great mentor that you get to work with and mm -hmm. you learn from and inspires yeah. you to want to be there uh, rather than not want to be there. Just like in childcare, um, in pre-primary every program is dependent on the educators in the space. So a great educator makes a great classroom mm -hmm. and a not so great educator should retire. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's all our questions for you yeah. today. Um, yeah. And uh, so follow Meg Crochet. Oh, Meg's underscore crochet on Instagram <laughs> and Meg's crochet creations on Facebook. And we will see you next time. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.